welcome to Shaw TV's coverage of the 47th annual Great International World Championship Bathtub Race. I'm Kate Bergen. I'm Kelly Robinson, and we are here at the finish line for the race, awaiting the tubbers here in Departure Bay. We were actually at the safety meeting, and safety is a big part of this bathtub race. We were there this morning, and crowds were warned, the tubbers were warned that there's a strong wind warning in effect, or at least there was at the meeting this morning. And uh, they, I'm hearing already in my ear that the first boat is coming in. I'm completely distracted. <laughs> uh, despite the rough weather, the crowd cheer, bring it on. Bring and apparently... And that does capture the spirit of bathtubbing. Uh, it's a three-way race, supposedly, but with this weather, as the wind picks up, we never know which way it's going to go. We are watching Sean Lamero in tub number 333, Nathan Barlow in tub number 240, and Clint Hine in tub number 933. Each one of those are going for their third win. I think we're going to throw things down now to Matt Carter on the beach. Kelly, yes, welcome down here to Departure Bay Beach Beach, and we already have rumors possibly of the first tub coming in, so I'm let you know really, really quickly, uh, beautiful day, high uh, suns of 24 degrees, but it looks like uh, wind about 10 to 15 knots, there was an extreme wind warning lifted by Environment Canada at 10.30 this morning, but again, they're still calling for quite strong winds dissipating through the course of the day. And again, we almost got the first tub coming in. We'll look there real quick. Just to let you know, high tide is here at 11 o'clock this morning, low tide at 4.30. So definitely tubbers want to get here as soon as possible, not only to win, but also to uh, decrease that run up the beach that they're going to have to do. All right, so we're hearing some horns. The first tub's coming in. So let's take a look over to the ocean and see what we can see. Nice applause from the crowd. All right, we're going to take our list here. I know earlier on, we had lots of reports of Brandon Lee being the first one in. Let's double check if that's going to be the case. All right, so is Brandon Lee. First tub coming in, crowd going nuts. Boat number 555, let's confirm this. Yeah, 555 heading up to the beach, cutting the engine. Classy, classy Cooper helmet there on there. And again, showing there those sea legs there, falling down, making sure the boat is safe and secure. Now, one of the things is, no, no one on the beach can actually touch the racer. He's disqualified. And here we go, Brandon, struggling up the roof, struggling up the stairs. Got to ring that bell. And success. Brandon Lee, number 555 from Tom Harris Auto Group, winning the class here at the 47th International World Championship Bathtub Race. Let's head it up over and maybe see what the winner's doing with Kate or Kelly. And that is the glorious sound of the first tubber crossing the finish line, number 555, with a time of 1.30.42. We're certainly not setting any records for fast times or slow times here today at the 47th annual race. Chris Glenn holds the all-time record set in two, the year 2000 in a modified tub with a time of 1.09.20. And we'll note that Nathan Barlow in a super modified tub and Chris Glenn in modified are both tied for the second fastest times at 1.11.54. We are now over the one hour and a half mark into the race. The longest time ever to have someone finish is two hours, 40 minutes and 56 seconds. That's how long it took Dan Rutherford from Australia to cross the finish line here in a modified tub. We're waiting now for the second boat to come in here at the 47th annual Great International Bathtub race and it we can't help but look back on last year the weather right now is absolutely fabulous for us here on dry land it's a little rough if you're out in the water of course but last year at about this point in the broadcast is when it began to downpour we're going to throw things over now to kelly robinson i believe she has an interview with the first place finisher just basically pin it and hold on it's more of an endurance race than a uh, speed race i'd say so what kind of experience did you pick up from last year, second place and first place this year? How did you uh, Don't go out and mill so early. <laughs> that was my big uh, mishap, but uh, I think just getting into the shore when it's rough like this, it's a little calmer in there, so, so you just kind of pin it and go. I can't really <laughs> explain more. What were the conditions again for us? Tell us what it was like out there. I mean, what was it like being in that boat? Um, it was, it's get, you're just getting tossed around. It's equivalent of falling on your hip from a boat four feet uh, probably about once every second basically so it uh it, about halfway through you kind of get like okay why am I out here but you know, once you see the finish line it's uh, it feels real good 
How does it feel right now? This is a pretty big win for you. There was some really heavy competition. Yeah, it's good. Uh, you know, I just, <laughs> it's hard to explain right now. I'm really, uh, really worked up, but it feels good. It feels good. You know, it's nice out and I get to relax now and just makes it worth it. Brandon, did you see some of the other boats that were struggling? Awesome. We know that uh, 16 in a row. All right. We, are, we now are going to be throwing things over to Kate. Uh, I believe that she's here with our, with, with Bill. All right. Over Thank you, now. Kelly. Yes, Bill McGuire, Commodore of the Loyal Nanaimo Bathtub Society. There was talk at the safety meeting this morning, Bill, about if there are delays in the start of the race, that that would happen in half-hour intervals. How, when, and who makes that call? Well, basically, we get a weather report from both Entrance Island plus halfway across to Vancouver uh, by, the by the weather department, and our safety and communications people relay that to the tubbers at the meeting. And uh, we did have a wind warning up, so we uh, tell all of them to uh, monitor their radios, and if, in fact, it's too windy or uh, it's too dangerous, then at uh, about 5 to, t to uh, 10, they're, they're uh, told that the race will be delayed till 10.30. And then, or 11, 11 30, and it's always in half hour intervals. And has that happened several uh, times in the past? We've had that happen once in 47 years. Wow. Yeah. Uh, what about cancellations? Is there, has it ever been canceled, postponed, delayed? No, not at all. And it uh, doesn't matter really how wet the weather is or whatever, that uh, doesn't have a bearing. So uh, basically, it's safety oriented, and we make the call. and. Uh, um, we, we, you know, it's, it's our responsibility not to send the tubs out into a situation where they're going to run into problems or the escort boat's going to uh, uh, have problems either. And that's sort of where your involvement started, Bill. You raced personally in the very first race back in 1967. I did. That was more of a fun tub adventure. I was in the Sroxman Service Club and we put in a tub with four four people in it and uh, it was really fun. The second, four people in yeah, one tub? That's what we they did. They should have yeah. that come back. <laughs> and then the following year we um, uh, I, I was working for Jack Harris Chevrolet, Tommy's dad, and uh, um, we put in a tub that year, and that year I did finish 21st in Vancouver, and in those days you finished on the water. Right. So it was kind of interesting, and then I, the, the start scared me, and I thought, well, we've got to, somebody's got to tell them that they've got to make some changes, and that's how I got involved in the Bathtub Society, and, uh, and I think we put on a much safer, well, I know we put on a much safer race, mm -hmm. Uh, but as I say, whether when it comes to safety, uh, there's no compromising. We want to make sure we can do everything that we possibly can. So excellent. We do have another tub coming in. We'll get more information on what tub number that is and who is captaining, captaining if that's a word, that boat with a closer view, Matt Carter. Thank you very much, Kate. Yes, it's looking like boat number 120, but judging on the fact that he came in a little bit slowly on the side and also without the uh, required safety headgear on, it looks like it probably is a, uh, a disqualification there. It's looking like club number 120, if we're seeing this properly. Yep, club number 120 from Quinn Motorshead, represented by Vancouver Island University. And yeah, so again, some sort of either uh, did not qualify, did not finish here. Showing again sort of some of the challenges that can come here for the race and someone who can speak to uh, some of the challenges uh, out there on the water. We have with us Brian Stuchnow, a 30-year veteran of bathtub racing. So Brian, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Uh, I wish I was out there, but uh, you know, I have my days. Yeah, absolutely. So, so tell us a little bit about bathtub racing, how you got into it and why you've uh, stuck with it for so long. Well, um, I used to go down to the Sea Festival and watch the tubbers come in and I said to myself, you know, hey, I can do this and so I bought a bathtub and, uh, in 1983 and that's uh, where I started and uh, I've been doing it ever since. Oh, that's awesome stuff. So now we talked earlier on about how it's a bit choppy out there. So what's, again, with your sort of experience, what, what do tubbers expect on a day like today out on the water? Well, if you've been racing this uh, race before circuits or been out in the water, everyone knows that it can get rough. So in this, this type of race, you set up your tub a little bit uh, differently. You put more weight up front, you lower the engine down a bit. Um, you put more padding possibly on your body and in the boat, uh, maybe more fuel. Um, and then it's just a fatigue factor to hang on as long as you can without going off plane or flipping over. Right. So with that, any of those 30 years, are there any years where you did not finish? I've always finished every race I've been in except one, which <laughs> I wish I seen the video on it because actually I had a crash and I launched about 10 feet in the air. <laughs> 
So. I'm glad you're still with us. So again, this, so this speaks to uh, some of the safety equipment. And did the uh, bathtub races always have the same safety regulations as they do now? Absolutely. We um, big on safety. The Loyal Enamel Bathtub Society is big on safety, right? And some people choose to wear extra safety equipment, which is fine, but it is a safe sport and uh, we do have safety equipment to wear. Perfect. All right, so now 47 years the race here in Nanaimo has been going on for. Uh, obviously one of the bigger events Nanaimo does put on. And what would you say to other tubbers or any other folks who might want to get involved? How would you encourage them to take part in this uh, wonderful celebration? Um, come out, um, talk to tubbers, come on out, try a tub. They'll love you to try a tub. And then if you come out and try a tub, you may get involved. It's a fun sport. And being on the island where most of the races are, it's not very far to travel. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you so, so much for your time, Brian. Yeah. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. You're very, very welcome. All right. Again, a great veteran. A lot of folks in here loving the bathtub races. And for more information, we're sending it back up to the main area and to Kate Burton. Kate, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. There was a point in time when I personally considered uh, racing a tub and then I had the opportunity to uh, escort and I said, no, I'm not doing that. It is crazy out there, especially on a day like today. There are 40 tubbers that as of last night at 6 p.m. were registered to race in the 47th annual bathtub race. And before we began our broadcast today, 16 of those had already been out. There was one um, that sunk and then got restarted again. That was tub number 03. Seven. And there's a lot of ifs, and, and it's sometimes hard to confirm the facts as they're happening between the beach and bathtub headquarters. It was mentioned in the safety meeting this morning that quite often, if the tubs are not accounted for, that they'll send out helicopters and search and rescue boats looking for the tubbers, only to find them in the pub. So it's very important for the tubbers to check in with bathtub headquarters because they will not leave without everyone accounted for. Just a few facts as we're waiting for an interview with another finisher here. There are 16 approximately rookie tubbers this year. At least eight of those are racing for their very first time. And we're very sad to say that Tyler Kyle from Two Men and Their Fishing Rods did not finish the race. He was out early. I'm sure he's learned a few things and that uh, out on the water in a bathtub is very different than being on a lake in a fishing boat with his good luck charm Nathan. Nathan Barlow has been racing since at least 1996. He's now in his 19th year of racing if not more and I know that he's a very competitive guy so we're looking forward to talking to him across the finish line later. No doubt he will be disappointed that he wasn't here first no matter what class that he's in. In 1997 the race stopped going over to Vancouver but the distance is still the same. It's a 36 mile race that leaves the Nanaimo Harbor. You go out around uh, Entrance Island all the way up to Winchelsea and then back again. And from what we can gather so far, the roughness today is coming in, uh, heading back into Departure Bay Beach. So that's a 36 mile course. The fastest it's ever been completed in is one hour and nine minutes. And the slowest time for a first place finisher ever to finish is two hours and 40 minutes. Super Modified was introduced in 2006. That was the 40th anniversary of the great International World Championship bathtub race. They introduced Super Modified when uh, tubbers started calling for uh, the ability and the regulations to allow them to kind of pump up their tubs just a little bit more. But what we're finding in weather conditions like this is that the stocks in the stock classes are expected to finish a whole lot sooner. We are going to throw things over now to Kelly Robinson with Mayor John Rattan. Thanks, Kate. I'm here with Mayor John Rattan, who has heavily been involved with the bathtub race past Commodore. John, what can you tell? You've got a list of numbers there. What is that? Well, these numbers, the list we're going to read off, there's five of them now, and they've all passed the third checkpoint. There's basically four in total. And so we know one is already finished, as, as the viewers may already know, but uh, these next five actually have passed checkpoint three, and the next one will be four, and then they'll be hitting the beach. So um, we could have several close finishers, and that's always exciting. So nobody has, at this point, nobody's, or there's only been our first guy that's passed checkpoint number four. Yeah, uh, the, the only one that's passed them all and finished is tub 555 at this point, uh, super modified, but, uh, and Brandon Lee is, is the tub pilot. 
So we're waiting to see uh, if all five of these are going to finish close in order or, or not. Um, we were told that 3-3-3 uh, three, three, three was quite advanced and uh, they, it may be in the lead, but we don't have that at this time. And that would be Sean Lamaru, I believe, 3-3-3. Three, three, three. And he's won twice in the last six years. He's going for win number three. Well, that's right. And Sean Lamaru is a very experienced tubber and uh, very competitive. And I think there's a good chance that he could come in second, but we're just going to have to wait and see. Well, that says a lot about Brandon Lee, who's this is only his second year racing, and he's come in first over top of Sean Lamaru, who's well experienced, like you say, and Nathan Barlow, same category. But let's remember um, the Tom Harris Auto Group has been sponsoring uh, Dave Lee and, and uh, the family for quite some time. So um, there's a long family heritage going back probably 30 years of racing. So while Brandon may be in year two, um, he's had a uh, background of years and years of experience and I'm sure he's been able to take advantage of all that knowledge. Perfect. And there seems to be an awful lot of outs this year. I mean, we were warned that it was really rough weather. Is this, you know, like, is this typical, this many outs? Well, you know, it, it's hard to say. Wind and, and waves are obviously uh, the problem out there and uh, it was a windy day and we knew it to start with but uh, it was in the, within our parameters to start the race, so uh, there'll be a lot of attrition. A number of people will drop out, obviously, for mechanical reasons and, uh, and just maybe because uh, they've got the wrong end of a wave and didn't uh, quite continue on. So we're, uh, that's why each tub has to have a, an escort boat with it to uh, make sure the rescue is safe and secure. Um, but we do and did expect quite a number of uh, non-finishers, and that's what we're getting. One of the things I also heard when I was at the meeting this morning talking with Nathan Barlow was that this kind of evens the race out a little bit when it's rough weather. They can only go so fast, whether you're stock or modified. Well, he's absolutely right. Um, and what happens, of course, you get uh, the tubs that are well designed, uh, usually super modified, and they're very quick in relatively flat water. Um, you've got some of the other older designs that are obviously are very much slower, but waves are the old equalizer. And so sometimes when it gets really rough, the very fast tubs aren't able to maintain the speed they're capable of and the slower tubs can. So it makes it very competitive and that's why we're looking forward to an exciting finish. Awesome. Well, here we've got another tubber coming in, so I'm going to throw things down to Matt Carter on the beach. Thank you so much, Kelly. Much appreciated. And we do have another tubber coming in. Before we look over there at who's seven, we're going to take a quick look at the winning tub, tub number 555 from Brandon Lee. And we'll see, uh, what did you think about the conditions out there today? Apparently it's the strong, silent type. But we're going to take a look at... Or sorry, the uh, tub is sort of constructed out of it. It can actually be made of pretty much any material whatsoever. Um, you do have to have the, op the rim here opened up. You can't have any fancy roof or sunroof or anything like that. And the big thing is it has to be a minimum of 350 pounds. And that includes the, uh, the racer, all the safety gear, the engine, the fuel, and that sort of thing. And so that's why you see all the boats get picked up by a team. We actually have a number of members of the Nanaimo Clippers down here helping out with that. And they go and weigh the boat and they weigh the driver as well. And sort of, again, this is a way to keep things a little bit even so that's why they got the boat up here getting ready to be weighed but yeah a really awesome little craft the other thing you can say about it the uh, engine eight horsepower is how strong it can be and when you look at the differences between the stock modified and super modified class it usually has a lot to do with uh, the type of propeller and some other things all right so now we're going to take a look at the new tubber we have going in we do have our safety crew down on the beach waving there waving their flags to let them know they have a safe entrance into the harbor the crowd's starting to go up. Again, we already have one finisher, Brandon Lee, who has won the race. And we got the second tubber coming in. Crowd is going nuts. Just heading outside the wharf. And again, they got to hit the beach, run up those jello legs, and ring the bell to signify the end of the race. Nice little cut there around the wharf. A little bit of style. And we'll see how the graceful the exit is out of here. We'll head down to the beach to see who it is. Looks like number 333 is hitting the beach right now. That's Sean Lamaru from the Nimo on the Super Modified running up, powering up, up the gates, and to the bell. There we go, 333, Sean Lamu from the Nimo, sponsored by Dingy Dock and Metal Supermarkets, a past champion in 2009 and 2007. And now we're gonna send it back up to the finish line with Kate and Kelly and see how Sean's doing. We are here with Paul Johnson, and if you've been, uh, sorry, just a note that the second tubber, number 333, Sean Lamoureux, crossed the finish line, rang the bell 147.05. Here with me now is Paul Johnson. If you followed bathtubs in Nanaimo at all, they are the royal family of bathtubbing here in the Harbor City. You've raced yourself how many times, Paul? Uh, I did about 25 years of racing and probably about 23 of the big races in that. 
Wow. So. It's kind of breaking my heart that you're not out there now. It's been five years. Why? I just got to that point where I was like, you know, I've been there, done that, and I'm hurting every time I look at the tub now. <laughs> we are looking at uh, tub number 333 right now, Sean Lamoureux finishing. What can you tell us about what he's maybe just experienced? Well, looking at the times that they're coming in today, they're running a little slower, out there a little longer, so it's definitely rough. Um, these guys here in the beach, they've probably been having the last half hour of real hard waves and I would say they're probably at the limits of their endurance right now. I'm probably getting pretty tired and happy to hit the beach. <laughs> How long did you spend in a tub? What was your longest race? I think my longest race was probably about two hours, 20 minutes or something. Wow. As close, opposed to my fastest was about an hour less than that. Okay. So. We're going to throw things over to Kelly Robinson for an in uh, interview with Sean Lamoureux. And I have some of the things to talk with about with Paul. So we'll come back to Paul after we talk to Sean and Kelly. All right, we're here with Sean Lamoureux. Sean, you just crossed the finish line. How did that feel? Ah, it's good to get here. <laughs> Pretty snotty out there, so I was uh, second, so. And are you happy with that finish? I know you've come in first tw uh, twice in the last six years. You were hoping for a third first place this today. Oh, I was definitely going for it, but uh, it was rough, and it was uh, just hard to keep the boat on plane on the way to win Chelsea, but... I'll take it. Uh, speaking of the conditions out there, like how many years have you actually raced and how does these conditions actually compare today to past years? Uh, I've definitely been in rougher races, but uh, it was definitely, it was rough. Like it's, I've, I managed to keep the boat on plane and uh, not end up upside down, so. Well, congratulations. I think you did great and you should be proud of your finish for sure. Oh, thanks. We'll let you catch your breath now. Thanks, Sean. All right, I, th I can hear cheering, so I know there's another boat coming in. And I believe now we're going to throw things down to Matt Carter on the beach. Absolutely. Number 113, Brad Davis, who looked like ran out of gas right there near the end and actually paddled his boat the last 20 feet towards shore. And now Brad running up the steps. Must be just exhausted after a boat and a swim. Here we go, ringing the bell, 113 Brad Davis, the first finisher in the stock category. So congratulations, Brad Davis, 113. Let's pass it back up to the finish line. 150.10 is the finishing time for the first stock tub to cross the finish line today. Number 113, Brad Davis. He is 35 years old. Now, it's our first stock tub to finish, but it was predicted that the modifieds and super modifieds would not do very well today. Paul, in your experience, what is it the motor? Is it the driver? What do you have to do to, to win today? Um, well, obviously, look at the water conditions and then. These guys that are taking the competition real serious are going to try and set their tub up for the water conditions. Um, How do you do that? Uh, there's little tricks, raising your tub a little bit. A lot of these tubs now actually have hydraulics to change the angles and heights of their engines, which gives their propellers better uh, speed. Okay, and so on a day like today, do you want your propeller deep? Usually. Um, they're going to tuck their props in a little closer to the tub, try and get a little more power out of them so that when they do hit the um, hard waves, they can pick up and go again real quick. Okay. What about body size? There was uh, something happened at the safety meeting this morning, and, and Nathan Barlow gave a little tap-tap to a bigger guy saying that's going to work on your side today. Is brawn a, a benefit? Uh, to a certain point. Um, I mean, we... As a rule state, there's a weight limit that makes it a fair playing field, but some of those heavier guys are going to be able to get up front of their tub, keeping the nose down a bit easier. Um, a lot of the lighter tubs, probably with their speed as well, are going to get tend to get tossed around and um, a little bit more unexpected happen with them. And trying to get over those waves, you were saying. <laughs> trying to get over those waves. A lot of times the faster tubs can get up on the top of the waves and just skip along, where the slower and the heavier tubs have to sort of go up and down and... Usually those are the ones that go down a little quicker. Excellent. We're going to find out how uh, the third finisher uh, played those waves today. Here's Kelly Robinson. We're here with the first tub that came in in stock, and I'm going to kind of just butt right into this interview and, and catch what he's saying. I didn't, uh, I didn't keep full throttle when the waves are really big like I have done in the past, which can really slow you down. I, I just manipulated the throttle the whole way through, basically with just just finish. That's all I had in mind is just make the finish and and keep her going and she went good. Describe uh, some of the other, other challenges that other boaters out there were having uh, 
16 to 20 boats, uh, got whipped up pretty good and didn't finish. What did you see? <laughs> Nothing. I just saw the waves in front of me. That's it. As long as I knew my chase boat was beside me, uh, that was the only thing that mattered. All right, we're going to catch up with the tubbers down on the beach, and here is Matt Carter. Thank you so much, Kelly. Yes, down here on Departure Bay Beach, again, an amazing, amazing crowd here for the 47th Annual World Championship International Bathtub Race. Three finishers in so far, and we do have reports of a fourth one coming in here very, very shortly. A uh, quick thing about some of the restrictions here to be in the bathtub race. The minimum age is actually 14, and I believe we have one tubber out there today who's 15 years of age and a couple of 17-year-olds as well. As well, you do have to have a pleasure operator's craft license, which can't get you in any bars in town, but again, gets you, in the, gets you into the, uh, the race here with a very, very wonderful time. All right, so we got, uh, again, the fourth finisher in here. People on the beach are waving, waving over. Oh, my goodness, back, forth, back, forth. Looks like me on my driver's test, actually, out there. Oh, a little bit of a spin move. There we go. Pulling a wheelie, much to the delight of the crowd. Well, we hope this is on purpose anyhow. That is some incredible showmanship here at the 47th International World Championship bathtub race. And we're going to get the look at the tub number here as they now cruise in. And we're hopefully avoiding the wharf on the way there. All right, it looks like 181 Cooper Ray from Cornerstone Tile, champion back 2011 and 2005. Coming into the shore, again looking ridiculously, and there's the dump into the water. Greg Luganus, eat your heart out. All right, Cooper Ray now struggling out of the water. Throwing to the crowd, throwing up the horns. There we go. <laughs> Cooper Ray now in the very, very classy, shiny helmet there. Heading up there to ring the bell again. Cooper Ray coming in in fourth place here in the seventh race. And Cooper Ray also in stock category, so the second finisher in stock. Great stuff. All right, and we're going to throw it back up to the finish line, I believe, with Kate. Kate, over to you. 154.37 is the time for tub number 181. That is Cooper Ray and Paul Johnson. Uh, knows him well. You've raced against him. Is that right or is that my assumption? I have had a few competitions out there with him. Um, he's a fantastic competitor, great tub driver. Um, he's one of these definite crazy tubbers. You know, he comes in, the rougher the better. He's probably ecstatic. He probably had a great time out there today. He was out there doing a bit of a victory lap as well. What, what is the feeling when you see that beach coming on the horizon? It's one of those best feelings in the world. First of all, you know you've accomplished something today. Um, it's truly a race of endurance. So when you see that beach, the excitement of hitting that beach, finishing and saying, yes, I did it, is unbelievable. Now, when you said one of those crazy tubbers, describe tubbing culture for us. Uh, I guess that would, uh, crazy tubbers would be how it is. I mean, in 67, when they said, hey, let's build these tubs and go to Vancouver, I think you had to be a little touched in the head to say, okay, I want to do that. Um, and definitely, the, you know, it brings out the craziness. Yeah. The whole weekend is about let's have fun and, you know, see if we can survive. Is there a serious side to it? Do people actually take this, this craziness of crossing the ocean in a tub seriously, or is it just fun? I think there's a bit of both. There's definitely, um, you know, your hardcore sports enthusiasts that they want to see if they can go, you know, faster and bigger and better and faster than anyone else. And those are the people that keep it interesting, keep the, com the competitive edge to it. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, we're going to actually throw things over now to Kelly Robin to see how competitive some of these tubbers are. And you're exactly right, Kate. It is competitive because I'm here with Cooper Ray, who looked at me just now and says, well, how did I do? And he came in second in the stock tub. How do you feel about that? Uh, I feel pretty good. I gave her everything I had out there. So if it was a bit rough for maybe I would have uh, placed a bit better, but we'll uh, always next year. And tell me, how, uh, how does this compare to other years, these conditions out there? Uh, this year was pretty, it was kind of mild, it was, it was nice, it wasn't uh, too, too bad. Yeah, I, I, I can run up the beach, usually I can't even get out of my tub, so. And you had a little bit of a celebration, little spin around yeah, there? I saw some other tubs coming up the back side, but I saw I had some time, so I had a little donut. <laughs> awesome. How does that feel when you see the beach and it's almost there? Good. Feels good. Awesome. We're going to let you catch your breath now, breath now. Cooper, uh, thanks so much for the interview. All right, we're going to throw things now over to Matt Carter on the beach.
Thank you so much, Kelly. Yes, we just had another finish come in, number 659, sponsored by um, Cora Dixon Friday Photo and Design. Now, I, did, I didn't do my journalistic uh, in, you know, diligence here to find out if it's Dan Fox or Dan Foe. His last name is spelled F-A-U-X. Regardless, that's a bit of a faux pas on my part, I guess you could say. But yes, we will eventually throw it out to Kate to find out more there. Again, so, so Dan Foe, boat number 659, now coming in in fifth place, also in the stock category. And we do have a number of other tubs coming in here, so before we get to that shot, we're going to throw it again back up to Kate who's no we're not gonna throw it to Kate never mind Kate's having a nap Kate is tired so we're gonna throw it back at us I do want to say notice to anyone who's uh, been watching here the boats coming in you notice the orange boys that are lining departure bay there sort of giving the tubbers that viewpoint uh, the uh, viewpoint of the tubs to come on in so you could say the boys are back in town as it were and again we have some more tubs coming in here after number 659 has finished you can also notice, if you see on the beach, uh, some of the, uh, the safety officials and the race guides, they raise their clipboards up, and they have actually different colored sheets on there, basically saying, coming fast, coming slow, but again, giving them a bit of a viewpoint to come in and hit then. All right, and we're going to do another check-in here to see who we have coming in sixth place here in the bathtub race. I'm going there, and we've got, whoa, looking down, zero. All right. 073. There is no 73. All right, so we're looking at uh, 013 Travis Brown, who 023. There we go. I think Travis Brown had not finished the race, so that would have been an incredible comeback if that's the case. But running up right now, Kalen Elander. Kalen Elander is now running up. Again, fish spike takes off the helmet, heads up to the bell, and with the ring, all done. Perfect. All right. Congratulations, John Rattan, Mayor John Rattan up at the finish line. And to see what's happening up at the finish line, we'll send it back up to Kate. Kate, over to you. Thanks, Matt. Number 659, Matt Fox is here. Um, how'd you do out there? You were saying, how did I do? How did I do? Yeah, it's Dan Fox. Dan Fox. I'm hoping I did good in the stock tub. Your time was 156.58. Uh, uh, you know, for this year, I think that's pretty good. Pretty good. What was it like yeah. out there? Oh, dude, it was rough. I sunk that tub so many times coming back in. I had to sit up on the bow because I couldn't bail it. So it was a little nose, a couple of torpedoes is what we call them. But. Wow, and was there any risk of you actually losing the tub and not getting it back? Every time, yeah. Every time. Have you ever had that happen before? Never. Never. How many times have you raced? Uh, this will be fifth year in a row. Fifth year in a row. Why do you yeah. do it? I mean, there's these crazy tubbers that get out there and take a beating. Why? Well, you kind of make it sound really good when you say it just like that. <laughs> yeah. It's the, the thrill. The the beast, the competition, yeah, absolutely. Does the tradition, sort of the Nanaimo tradition, play a role for you? Well, you're not in Nanaimo way unless you tub, right? Right. I think that comes a long way. What kind of things have you learned in the five years? A different approach, things you tweak year to year? I always want to go faster. I always want to be a modified or super modified. And then it blows the day of, and I'm glad I'm a stock tub and a little bit heavier. We're about 100 pounds overweight, and it helps out there. Excellent. Okay, we're going to throw things over now to Kelly Robinson. The tubbers are coming over the finish now, finish line now, fast and furious. Here's Kelly. We're here with Kalen Elander. He was third to finish in the stock category. Kalen, how does that feel? Feels pretty good. <laughs> what is the conditions like out there? I hear it's pretty rough. It was really rough on the way out, not so bad on the way in. Did you have a strategy? I hugged the shore all the way up. That was it. Did you take much of a beating? Oh, yeah. Now, how many years have you done this? Uh, I think it's my third year now. How does this year compare to others? Uh, it was rougher than last year, that's for sure. And last year it was pouring down rain. Yeah, <laughs> nicer weather. Awesome. Is there any kind of, do you think this is something that you would do again? Yeah, we'll do it next year. So are you going to keep going until you come in first? Yep. <laughs> what would you say to other tubbers that are thinking, hey, you know, like this kind of looks like fun. I might want to try it. Uh, you got to go for it. Grab a tub and go. Awesome, and with registration numbers up, I think there should be some more people doing that. Thanks so much, Kaylin. Right We're going to throw things. Actually, I'm not sure. People are looking at me like, don't throw anywhere. So, okay, no, I've got clarification. We're going to go back down to the beach with Matt Carter. Thank you so much, Kelly. Yes, I am indeed down here with my man, Derek Johnson, behind the camera. Derek, how you doing, man? Excellent. Beautiful. All right, so we just had another finisher coming in. Uh, fifth place in stock, Rob Saywell, boat 024. I call it a boat. I guess that is a bit of an optimistic descriptor of it, but yes, the bathtub's there. Again, Rob Saywell coming in in fifth place.
So now we've had seven finishers so far over the next couple or the last first couple hours. Again, the boats took off at 11 a.m. this morning, just after the uh, <laughs> the extreme wind warning had passed. So again, a bit of a rough rise. You're hearing from the tubbers out there, and I'm sure we'll get more comments from the other tubbers as they do come in. So again, we're about an hour and a half, two hours into it so far. Uh, looking out, no one coming at this point, no one from the modified class yet. And as mentioned earlier, sort of some of the differences between the boats, super modified to modified and the stock, have to do with the propellers. But they are pretty much the same strength of edge and all about eight horsepower there. So, all right, let me see now, do we have folks up at the finish line to go? All right, yes, we're going to send it over to Kate again up at the finish line to see what's happening up there. Kate, over to you. We're here with tub number 024, Rob Saywell from Nanaimo, just finished in his stock tub with a time of 2.0101. Did you know that was your time? No. No. How do you feel about it? Uh, it's <laughs> shitty, kind of. But really? But yeah, oh, yeah. why? What were you hoping for? First. First or last. First. Or, what was it like out there today? We all know it was rough, but try to paint a picture that we can actually imagine what it was like in the tub today. Uh, on the way there, it sucked. It was pretty choppy, but on the way back, it was good. Really? We thought it was the opposite way around. That was smoother on the way out. And no, no, it was good on the way back, but on the way there it sucked. Any moments that you thought you just weren't able to complete? No, no, it was good. It's a good race. <laughs> He's so straight, yeah. matter, you know, matter of fact, to the point. How many times have you have you raced, and are you going to do it again? Yeah, I'm going to do it again. This is like fourth, I think. Your fourth. Why do you do it? I don't know, because it's fun. <laughs> I don't know. And it, yeah, why did you decide to go? St do you go stock every year? Do you consider sort of moving up to modified yeah, or not up but over? Trying to get a modified boat, but it's you know, yeah. I, I don't want to be stock anymore. Uh, how, why not? Yeah, uh, it's too slow. Too slow. Yeah. But I okay. Go so, fast out there. so what? What? Talk to me a bit about the difference between you know slow and steady in conditions like this compared to fast and a modified, and where the the pros and cons come into your decision. I don't know. I haven't been in a super mod tub yet, but uh, they friggin' fly. They fly past us. How fast do you feel? How fast can you get going in one of those? I think uh, in the super mods, I don't know how fast they go. We go like 30 in the stock. Okay. Yeah. Anything else you want to say about your experience out there today? I wish we could get cameras on the water in those tubs. We'll have to put some GoPros on people's heads with uh, some kind of satellite connection one of these years. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So congratulations to Rob Saywell, tub number 024, finishing with a time of two hours, one minute, and one second. We're starting to lose track uh, in the moment as to how many tubs are still out there, but there is assurance that uh, the race will not be called. The race is not over until all of the tubs are accounted for. And it's very important that the escort boats maintain their communication with bathtub headquarters, which is located on one of the top floors of the Coast Bastion Hotel in downtown Nanaimo. Every year there is a salute from the Loyal Nanaimo Bathtub Society to a community organization. And this year it is the Nanaimo and District Hospital Foundation celebrating 50 years. We're only three years away from celebrating 50 years of bathtubbing in Nanaimo. And I have no doubt that that will be a huge celebration for the Harbor City. I do believe we're throwing things down to the beach now. You never know what is next when it comes to Matt Carter. Thank you so much, Kate. Yes, down here at the beach, departure beach. Again, another huge, huge crowd showing up under beautiful conditions here. Again, a high temperature of about 24 uh, degrees. Again, quite a nice breeze for us down here on the beach, where we're not getting soaked like we were under the rain last year, keeping us nice and cool. But again, pretty, uh, pretty harsh conditions for the tubbers out there, with the wind reaching about 10 to 15 knots. Uh, again, an extreme wind warning that was released a little, or ended a bit this morning, so, but is here from the tubbers, a little bit of a rough shape. I also want to extend a big shout out again, what Kate said earlier, we're also celebrating the 50th year of the Nanaimo Regional General Hospital down here at the Bathtub Race. Uh, good folks, you saw them noticed up on the posters that were put up on around town. My mom herself was actually an intensive care nurse here for a long, long time, and definitely the doctors, the nurses, the staff work very, very hard. So big up to the folks at NRGH, and thanks so much again for taking part here in the 47th Annual Bathtub Race. And as you can see over on the, on the uh, water here, the waves a little bit not quite as harsh as before. All sorts of uh, boats who come up for the best seat in town to watch the race. And as mentioned earlier, the Orange Boys to bring them in. And of course, the occasional BC Ferry or two, which makes things a little bit tricky when it comes to the weight. Uh, the, uh, I believe they tried to put the Queen of Cowichan into the race this year. and we're just, we're just denied last minute. So that would have been pretty entertaining, especially a boat powered by the Sunshine Breakfast. All right, so now we're going to stop the bad jokes. And I believe Kelly Robinson is up near the finish line, and she's got something to tell us. Kelly, what's going on up there? Thanks, Matt. I'm here with Margaret Johnson, and actually I was at the meeting this morning, Margaret, and when they announced your name, the crowd went wild. <laughs> they, they have a love for you. Yes, I've been at it a long time. 
And in your experience, I mean, there's lots. I can see you've got a golden bathtub plug on your neck and a golden bathtub, and I've got this golden plug here. There's a lot of memorabilia. Yes, there certainly is. We've had our coin started in 1969. It's the longest running trade dollar in Canada. And each year we present a commemorative dollar and a coin set with three different coins in it. And are there some coins that are kind of rare or hard to find collectibles? We have one in particular which was in 1969 because the day of the race was the day the man landed on the moon. So they took a few of the coins and had them imprinted with man landing on the moon. So they're worth a lot of money now. They're a real collector's item. And do you have all of these collectors? Have you been a collector yourself? I have been. Nice. And, you know, we're so close to 50 years of bathtub celebration. How does that make you feel? <laughs> Very old. <laughs> what, is it, what is it kind of like watching it evolve into where it is today? Oh, it's been really interesting because at first it was, uh, you know, a lot of the tubs wouldn't even get out of the harbour. They were very primitive and it's really developed into a high-tech sport. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Margaret. We're going to throw things over to Kate, who's standing by with Bill McGuire. Thank you, Kelly. We are here with Bill McGuire. When the tubs come in, they seem to come in clusters. They're a bit of a lull right now. At this point in the race, Bill, is there any way to know how many tubbers are still out there giving it or how many are giving up and where we're at? Right. Okay. Well, we, we do a, a survey with through our uh, the amateur radio club who are our communication arms. And uh, again, uh, I've got a call in right now to uh, bathtub control. And from there, I'll get information in regards to it. Uh, tubs that are in and out of the race, there's a board over uh, the far side of the, the uh, finish line. And that lets people know if the tubs are out. And it also lets you know if the tubs are in. But sometimes the information doesn't gel with people that are looking after their tubs. So um, anyways, it's just a... Uh, uh, they do such a great job for us, and, and without them, we wouldn't know if the tubs were finished, not finished, or whatever. So A huge uh, challenge in communication, I, I can't imagine. And everybody wants the information right now, and they all want it to be precisely accurate to the second. We can't relate to that at all. We're going to touch a little bit, Bill, if you will, on some of the rules. We saw two disqualifications already, and that was simply because they didn't show up to the safety meeting. So obviously, if you're not yeah. there to get the safety talk, you're out of the race. What are some of the things? that will get you disqualified if you do actually start? Well, if you start prior to uh, um, or uh, upon registration, uh, each tub is checked to make sure it, uh, it meets all the standards of the Department of Transportation. It's got to uh, have a paddle and it's got to have a baler and it's got to have rope and it's got to have uh, a, uh, a flashlight. Um, so it has to meet all those standards and then it must look like a bathtub and the side, the side view has got to be at least 12 inches so that you could know that it's a bathtub. And then we put the driver in and then we put the motor on and this is before we check the motor to make sure they weigh a minimum of 350 pounds. Okay. And uh, that, that's just a couple of the things and then of course the motor inspection is very technical. We have a mechanic who looks at it and uh, there's three classes, so we don't have to uh, uh, check the super modified. They're in a class by themselves. But the other two classes have to be checked, and uh, their motor is checked to make sure that it has a dead, dead, uh, dead man switch on it and the, the normal things. But as far as what they do internally, that's not uh, our business. Okay. And that is actually just talking about the tub itself. There's an escort boat that plays a hugely important role in safety of the tubbers. We're going to talk to you later a little bit, Bill, because I understand there are two more tubs uh, coming up to the beach now. We're going to throw things over to Matt Carter. Thank you so much, Kate. Yes, down at the beach. And well, before we look at the race, I'm here with uh, Brendan Taylor from the Nanaimo Clippers Hockey Club. Down here helping out. Brendan, how are you doing today? Good, thanks. Excellent. So again, you and a number of your teammates are down here today. So what are, what are you guys' role helping out with the competition? Um, basically, when the boats come in, we're going to grab them and we're carrying them up on the uh, platforms there and we're putting them on the weigh scale. Now, if you're, so you're from Nanaimo, what do you think about how this event, what does it mean to Nanaimo? It's awesome. It's pretty cool. I mean, look at how many people are out here. Everyone comes out and supports it and they all work hard here trying to, with the bathtub races, so it's pretty cool. Awesome. All right. Well, i got to let you get back to it, get some tubs up. we got a race in, so thank you so much for your help today. The rest of the afternoon. All right, Brendan Taylor from the Nanaimo Clippers. And we're looking up at the race there. Yes.
here, so we're just going to get over and find out the boats we have that finished up. Looking like boat number 240. Marlo has arrived and slowly in behind. Looks like boat number looking like 960. We're going to check on that. So in the meantime, we're going to be the beach. For the beach. All right, we're going to send it up to uh, on the over the finish line. Pardon? Uh, we're waiting to figure out uh, how close that race was. We actually know we're trying to get the times uh, allocated to the right tubber. Uh, Garcia, we don't have a tub number on him yet. A time of 2.12.05. Six seconds later, 2.12.11. It came down to a foot race. We heard a quote saying, um, I've never worked so hard for seventh place in my life. And there was also uh, at the safety meeting this morning, Sean Lamoureux gave uh, this guy a little pat on his belly saying that's going to work in your favor today. But uh, Sean maybe didn't know what he was talking about at that point because he finished well ahead of Mr. Garcia, who we will get an interview with in just a couple of moments here. Kelly Robinson is trying to get his way in. He looks a little bit painful as you'll see in a moment he's uh, leaning over the chair and there's a st. John's ambulance paramedics here um, just making sure that there is no serious concerns because when you're crouched down in a little bathtub on your knees and you are literally going from here up and down it takes quite the the, the beating um, to stay in the tub for that long and you can't stop you're out there and you just don't want to give up you've come this far there's no way that you're going to give up and say I can't do this uh, Kelly Robinson is uh, trying to get an interview with Mr. Garcia but he's just making sure that he's he's okay he's gonna catch his wind make sure there's no serious injuries unfortunately there is a little bit of a history not for quite some time of serious injuries in the bathtub race which is one of the reasons why it was redirected to finish here in departure Bay instead of going over to the mainland. Uh, I do believe that somebody lost an arm or a leg at one point. I think Mr. Garcia is heading over to the shower um, just to refresh himself. And then Kelly Robinson will hopefully have a little conversation. I don't know if you can see him over there, uh, Jocelyn. He's just catching his breath. It looks like uh, it was a pretty hard ride for him today. We do have, I believe, some activity down on the beach. We're going to see what's going on down there in just a few minutes. We're going to throw things over now, though, to uh, Kelly Robinson to see what's up with Mr. Garcia. Actually, we're, we're going to let Mr. Garcia continue in his shower, but I'm here with Nathan Barlow. It was actually Nathan Barlow that uh, gave a tap to Jamie this morning and said, hey, you know, that weight's going to work for you. Yeah, it did. I uh, I fall my whole way back, and uh, you know he's he's got a lot more weight on me than I do. And uh, he ran an awesome race on the way home from Chelsea. I uh, managed to pass me, and uh, in season I should have had him in. And uh, he made me push. I never uh, never worked so hard for uh, a finish this low before. But uh, you know it was good. It was good to be there with Jamie. And uh, you know Jamie and I battled it on the way back, and and he was on the inside, and uh, I didn't think he'd have a good run on the inside line. I thought I'd take him on the outside. And, didn't happen and uh, you know congrats to him he, he made me run made me work my ass off today so all right I hear that I'm cutting out so part of that interview is a little bit cut out um, Nathan you have a lot of experience I read 1996 you placed up in first um, <laughs> you're not you're not that old so how long have you been racing for it's 21st year and how does this year compare to others uh, it's about on par I mean uh, my finish unfortunately a bit below par for me but uh, you know, conditions were par. I just uh, just wasn't feeling the love today, unfortunately. But uh, you know, hey, I guess we'll be back next year, right? So yeah, this is not you're not done with this yet. Uh, I've won it twice, and uh, to pack it in on a year that I didn't win, I think it uh, it really bothered me. I know Aaron did. Um, just that, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see him back because of it. So. Uh, if I pack it in, I want to be at it on a winning year. So. And I know you have some really good finishing times. Um, is there a time you're trying to beat? I want the record. Um, I wanted. I wanted it the year. I last time I won it and hit the log. Should have had it that year, but you know, it wasn't to be. It was uh, you know, if it wasn't for a log, I'm sure I'd have had it. But uh, I, I really want the record. But I'd be happy with just one more win. <laughs> Make it three. Perfect. Thank you so much, Nathan. We Thanks think you did great. Have a good one. Thank you so much. And we're going to throw things down now back to the beach.
Uh, obviously, Kelly was not speaking with Nathan, with uh, Jamie Garcia. She was speaking with Nathan Barlow because I'm speaking with Jamie Garcia. He remembers a conversation last year in the pouring rain. How was it for you this year? It was a rough go. Um, I had a bunch of problems at the beginning of the race. I, we dumped it. I got cut off by a, by a boat and I got swamped and I flipped. Got, got it going. Went and something. When you say flip, are you out of the tub at this I'm point? Completely off and out in the water. And then I had to get my marbles. We got the boat up. The uh, back of the skag went sideways and pulled, and my motor wasn't right. It wasn't riding properly. So then um, I hit a wave the wrong way and I flipped. Again. Again. Right before entrance. We went down twice. And then we got it up, got going got around entrance and then hammered all the way through, flipped again, coming around the wind, wind Chelsea's. <sighs> You're still winded from this experience. And you said you got a cramp. When did that, that start? You were out there for two hours. I know. Whew. When did the cramp start, do you think? Where is it? Is it in your leg here? Right there. And how long were you enduring that? Well, well the whole race. Uh, once I got halfway, uh, we uh, got in, and uh, it, I just I couldn't move. Like running there, I thought I tore it off, coming up the ramp. Tore what off? My calf, because <laughs> I couldn't move it. It was so cramped well, up. I shouldn't laugh. It's not funny. Right. So it was a good run. It was rough out there. And I think you beat Nathan Barlow by six seconds. How does yeah. that feel? Feels pretty good. <laughs> yeah, and for being under twice. We did all right. Excellent. Now, you got to ask the question why. You think you tore your calf off. You were physically out of your boat twice. Why do this? It's determination. I want to finish. It's it's the most adrenaline you'll ever get if you get in one of these boats. And you it's were a lot of fun. You were racing uh, stock? Super modified. Super modified. Yeah. And are you going to do it again? Yes. I'm going to do it till I win this thing. And you've done two years so no. far. This is, I think, is either my 10th year or my 11th year. 10th or 11th year. And is this the best you've done so Last far? Last year, I think I came in eighth, so one more spot up. So seventh this year. We're moving on. And you said that you'd never work so hard for seventh place in your life, but you're willing to do it again. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. You're Thanks, welcome. Jamie. Congratulations. Love the spirit and a trooper all the way gonna talk right through it we're gonna throw things over now i'm getting that feels good <laughs> that feels do it again do it again god it's getting hot thank you yes we're gonna throw things over now to kelly robinson <laughs> thanks kate i'm here with clint hein clint i knew you guys have, you've won two races in the last six years and there's three of you that have won two races in the last six years and all of you were going for a first place today uh how did it go for you today uh good in the beginning i had the lead to uh all the way around entrance and then uh, halfway to neck point. Uh, and then uh, Brandon Lee was right on me. We were neck and neck at uh, just past neck point and then uh, I went down and we got the tub going again. And when I was getting it in, it, in it again, uh, it, it flipped over. So we had to get it going again. And we got going again and finished, but yeah, it was rough. So when you say you went down and it flipped over, the actual tub sank. Yeah, it was underwater. I was in the water, just the bow was sticking out. So we had to get a hold of it and drag it onto the swim grid and up into the boat, three of us, and get the engine going again. And yeah, and uh, getting into the tub again, it flipped over. But we got it going again. And Are you happy with your finish today? Uh, not really, no. But uh, we finished, so I'm happy about that, that and we got going again. This is something that you've done year after year and you've got some wins under your belt. What Do you see an end in sight? Uh, I don't know. I'm pretty beat right now. I don't feel like doing another one. <laughs> but yeah, I'll be back. Awesome. Is there a little bit of a competition between you and Sean and Nathan who all have two yeah. first places? Yeah, we're all, uh, we've all been talking about it and who's going to get the next one. And yeah, so there, there's definitely a bit of a rivalry there. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Wish you the best of luck next year. I'm sure we'll see you back, and it'll be an interesting race to follow then. We're going to throw things back onto the beach with Matt.
Thank you so much, Kelly. Much appreciated. Yeah, it looks like we got our mics back up and running. And again, we have our tubbers, of course, uh, running down the ocean very, very well as well. You can see behind me right now an amazing looking crowd here down at Departure Bay Beach. So once again, the Nanaimo stepping up to the fore and coming down, supporting the tubbers as they come over. And again, one of the Nanaimo's uh, most amazing, amazing events and festivals. In the last few minutes, we just had come in number, uh, tub number 360. That's uh, now Wallace from the Nanaimo. That's in the super modified class. And anyway, we had a good, uh, good number of races back in a little bit, a bit of a rush. So, and if you're here and up there, uh, still some pretty choppy conditions, making things very, very challenging, but obviously uh, very great for them to make it in. As we mentioned earlier as well, um, one of the reasons maybe they fall into the water afterwards isn't just for the, uh, the, the grand entrance, but again, the, uh, the tubbers and their boats, they're all weighed afterwards, and you have to be a minimum of 350 pounds to officially qualify for ending the race. So that is the tubber plus the boat, motor, fuel, and much, much more. And again, it's that sort of weight, keeping it equal so that it's uh, equal competition for all the different racers there. So all right, so we're going to check on the ocean, see what else is happening. But in the meantime, we're going to send it back to the finish line and see what's happening with Kate. Kate, over to you. We're here with tub number 002, Trevor Short. Uh, just finished. Unfortunately, we don't have a time yet. You don't know how you did? No idea. Now, you were saying you were watching a crack in your boat the whole time. That's not a good feeling. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> what was happening? Paint a picture for us so we can pretend that it was us it with was you. existing crack on the tub that we already fixed. Uh, I guess it started splitting again. Coming around Anstrand, so I looked back and saw that the split was in the back again. So every five or ten minutes, I'd have to reach back and feel it, make sure it's not bigger. And are you now going to repair that, tub number 002? Are you going to repair it and, and bring it back, or do you start from scratch now, assuming that you're going to do this again next year? I'll run the same tub for a while uh, until it's too gone. And you've run it twice now? No, this was the first time. Uh, before that, I had a tub from, like, the 70s. Okay. Yeah. What's the, how was the tub from the 70s different from a tub today? Uh, it was pretty much made out of a windsurfer. It's about four feet wide and only six feet long. So it's pretty much a flat-bottom boat. Now you've done it twice, once in 2010 and once this year. Why why the gap in between there? My motor blew up the day before the race. Last, last year? Yeah. Oh, that's got to hurt. Yeah, it kind of sucked. Yeah. And then again, the why. Why would you do this? I don't know. Just kind of got started. My brother did it years ago, and then I was on the spotter boat and enjoyed it, so we went at it. And you might have an issue with your foot. What's going on with your foot? Feeling up, I spilt gas. Uh, at the very beginning? No, going around Wind Chelsea's, we had to slow down and put gas in because I was running on fumes and I dumped a bottle of gas in the boat. Nice. Yeah. Okay, and then the St. John's people were telling us that, that it can then kind of bubble up and that doesn't really sound very pretty. No, you have to wash her off with water, they're telling me. And soap, <laughs> everything. Why did you run out of gas so soon? Did you just in the sort of pooling area too long? I'm only running off a 12 liter tank. Uh, I sad that I couldn't fit a bigger tank in the boat. And that's just what happened. Can you get a bigger, ta bigger tank in there next year? Probably. I'll just have to fab one up. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Sounds like a whole lot of fun. I'm almost getting tempted to uh, commit to racing in a tub myself, but uh, as soon as I see some video of the tubbers in the water, I'll change my mind real quick. We're going to throw things over now to Kelly Robinson. Thanks, Kate. I'm standing by with Amber Hushy, who is Miss Nanaimo. And there's quite a presence here of all sorts of crowns, all sorts of ambassadors for the city. Amber, what is your guys' involvement here today? All right, so today we are helping down the boaters. After they ring the bell, we're bringing them down to get weighed and then over to the St. John's Ambulance as well. And how's that been so far? I mean, they're looking a little wobbly when they start coming down. They're pretty wobbly. They're doing pretty good, though. None of them have fallen over yet, but they are pretty beat up once they get back. So you guys got a big job holding them up then? Yeah, holding them up and make sure they don't fall over. <laughs> awesome. Well, we're right in the middle of the race. We have some tubbers, you know, constantly coming in behind us. How many races have you watched? I've watched two so far, and I've both been involved as a Miss Nanaimo candidate and Miss Nanaimo myself. They're all really interesting. I'm excited to see next year's. Awesome. And how do you feel about today's weather? If you were here last year, you know it wasn't so nice. Uh, what do you think about today? Today seems a lot better than last year for sure. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Amber. Thank you. I'm not exactly sure where we're going to go right next. Um, I believe we're going to hit the beach and find out if there's any more tubbers coming in. And here's Matt Carter, because I know even if there's no tubbers out there, he'll be entertaining. Well, Kelly, thanks so much for putting on the pressure there. So, all right, well, I was going to do a bit of a dance, but I do not want to fall over any of the tubs that we have lined up here over the beach. 
And yeah, so what happens is as soon as the uh, Tuppers come in, as you've seen, they basically tumble out of their boat and run up and ring the bell. And we got a crew of uh, Nanaimo clippers as well as some bathtubbing volunteers and staff members to lift the boats out of the beach. All right, so one thing is mentioned too, uh, out of the 40 racers that were signed up for this year's race, we have 16 first timers. So very cool for them to get in and keep, uh, again, the spirit and the energy of this, uh, of this uh, event going. Hopefully no two-timers, because, you know, I'm telling you, it's just people of the highest, highest abilities here at the bathtub race. Also, I do want to mention that the first race happened in 1967. A fellow by the name of Rusty won that one, but again, no Rusty tubbers here, especially with the rough conditions, spraying water all through the boats there. And now, right, uh, I think we got some more information happening for us. Back up on by the finish line, so we're going to send it back over to you. Kate. Kate, you ready to go? Kate? We've got, like, five cameras. I gotta Hi there, we're here with Niall Wallace. I always like to explain to the tubbers what's going on because they must think I'm just zoning out, but really I'm listening to Christina in the truck who's doing a fabulous job of directing today. Also doing a fabulous job, Niall Wallace in tub number 360, a time of 2-2026, and you're hobbling pretty good. What happened out there? I uh, ended up laying in a pool of ga uh, gas, or spilled gas all over myself. So. On, en route? Yeah, on route, I had the fuel up uh, coming around when Chelsea's there, so. And with conditions like this today, do do you go through fuel quicker? I'm, I'm not a boater I myself. I so. fuel once, so I didn't, rather than running out, coming down the chute there, but yeah. And how many times have you done this crazy thing they call bathtubbing? This is my sixth year. Why? <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea. I always ask myself that when I get to Entrance Island. What the hell am I doing here? But I just love it. And entrance is pretty close to the, the start, right? So tell, take me through your race today and, and, and how long it took you approximately to get from point to point and, and if there were any moments in there that you just thought, I'm done, I can't finish this. Well, we've come around entrance here. We had a good start out of the harbor, picked up my pilot boat, got to entrance, and then uh, turned around entrance and flipped her. flipped her. So we had to drag the boat up on the pilot boat, flush out the, uh, the pull the plugs out, flush out the, uh, the water and uh, got her going again, but she was sputtering the whole way back up, so she wasn't running right, So, but it was good fun. And was was that a point where you thought, nah, let's oh, just, let's too much work? Going. Oh yeah, I didn't think we'd get going. The seas were pretty rough out by entrance there. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. who's this guy beside you? Was he on your escort boat? Yeah, this is Jay, my uh, sponsor. <laughs> Coldwell Bankers. Cold bankers. Yeah, cool. Now, the, the escorts play a hugely important role, and I don't think a lot of people who have n never experienced, who haven't experienced what it's like out there in the water, know the important role that that escort boat plays. Could you do it without your buddy beside oh, you there? No way. No. Like, what happened today, I flipped it. I would have been, you know, it's, no, you couldn't do it without them. Okay, they what, play a key role in, in me being out there, right? So. Right. What would you say to someone out there who's maybe thinking about getting in a tub next year? I would say do it. We need more tubbers. Okay, it's, that makes the race yeah. better, more oh, competitive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Definitely. Excellent. What do you think about the weight? How, how'd you do on weight today? Oh, I have no idea. Hopefully. Do that, I think. Yeah, I haven't even checked yet, but. Okay. But, yeah. So for all you know, you're disqualified. Yeah. <laughs> sure. No, you're not. No, went, you're not. I went through all that. Fine. <laughs> I'm just bugging you. I'm trying to make a segue, actually, because Kelly Robinson is standing by the scale at the moment to talk about the technicalities of the tubbers weighing in. Thanks, Kate. I'm here with Diane Rattan. Diane, how important is this weight here? Well, it's part of the qualifications for becoming a winner. You have to be a certain weight and you, they add it to when they weigh the tubs, the weight of the tub and the, when you get the total, it has to be past the minimum weight. And how many years have you been here helping out and how does this compare? Like these tubbers are tired when they come running down. Well, they are tired and sometimes they land on us, and <laughs> but they also have escorts that are ha helping them on either side. But uh, trying to get their leg up and sit down on this weighing machine is a challenge for a lot of them, but they manage with all the help. Awesome. Thank you so much, Diane. We're, I hear there's another tubber coming in, so you're going to have somebody to weigh right really quick here, so I'm going to get out of your way, but thank you so much. Okay. We're going to throw things back down to the beach with Matt and find out who's coming in. All right. Thank you very much, Kelly. We're going to take a look here. Derek's going to focus in on what's happening, and we've got another tip coming in, a classy, classy-looking red boat. It's looking like number 916, if I see that properly, and that's Catherine Lamaru from the Nanaimo, sponsored by Alice's Restaurant. The big dive again, Catherine Lamaru struggling to get up past the waves. And again, you can't have any assistance from anyone on the shore or it is a disqualification. Through the waves, rub the beach, 
Crowd going nuts. Up the steps and heading to the finish line again for ringing that bell. And there it is, Captain Lamaru once again to 916 in the stock class. Finishing up here. Beautiful again, members of the Nemo Clippers picking up the boat. Doesn't look like anyone else coming in mostly at the moment, but again, we've got. Um, we're looking at just the numbers now. When we did, we did have about 16 boats to show who did, uh, who either were disqualified or sank, well, as we heard earlier over the course of the race, out of about the 40. We've had about 12 to 15 uh, boats in so far, so it looks like another 10 or so still out there to the best of our knowledge. So we're going to see uh, how they're doing as the waters are a little bit, little bit less rough, but again, the tide is going out, so it could be a bit of a rush to get up the beach once they get here. So, all right, so we're going to take a look. Uh, we have folks up at the finish line that are ready to yak away. All right, looks like we're going to send it over to Kate right now. Kate, what is happening up there on the beach? <laughs> okay, we are going to have an interview with the first woman tubber to cross the finish line in just a minute. A very important player in the whole picture is St. John Ambulance. Kim Mitchell is a superintendent of... The Adult Brigade. Adult Brigade. Now, when a tubber comes across the finish line, they ring the bell, they're exhausted, they're bruised, they're cramped over. What are you looking for? Uh, basically, we're looking for gas burns, second-degree burns from uh, the gasoline coming from the engines of their tubs. We're looking for little scrapes, uh, hypothermia potentially, getting their clothes off, getting all that tight restrictive stuff off and and just making sure they're doing okay and how is everybody doing today any kind of more than moderate bumps and bruises no you know what this year and last year uh, it seems like the tubbers are more prepared they're sort of got bit better suits on they're they're really doing okay we just okay. minor things this year excellent I was kind of surprised to know that just some gasoline on your skin could be so damaging yeah well with the salt water and the gasoline they sit in there for hours sometimes and it sits on the skin and it actually causes chemical burns Wow. bubbles like big blisters it's okay. not pretty no I th thank you very much for You're everything welcome. that you do today Kim Mitchell thank with you. st. John's ambulance we're gonna throw things over now to Kelly Robinson the first woman has crossed the finish line that's right, Kate. I'm here with Catherine Lamaru, the first woman to cross the finish line. And of course, I also heard every year you've entered, you finished. Yes, this is my third year. And how do you feel about today? Awesome. Actually, I'm wondering what place I got. <laughs> I still don't know. I feel really good, though. I wish I had the answers for you. I don't know exactly where you placed, but I do know that there's about eight tubs still left in the race. And I know that when we started, over a quarter of them had already been out. So oh, there's, really? there was a lot of outs. Why do you think so many were out? Because it was really rough in the beginning. <laughs> it was, I thought I was going to lose it so many times. It was intense just keeping the tub in the water. Yeah, I, I honestly, at least 10 times I've been in my escort boat thought I was going down. <laughs> so, yeah, it's especially in the beginning and all the boats and everything going, it's easy to lose it in there. So that would explain why so many went out in the very beginning. But you, you held through, you made it to the finish line. Yeah. What would you say to maybe other women out there that are thinking, yeah, I could do that too? You should totally do it. And if you want any help, give me a call. <laughs> I'll give you a hand. I'll let you know what it's like and what you have to do to get out there and do it. It's so fun. Awesome. And everybody is so supportive at the Bath of Society. Thank you so yes, much, Catherine. Yes. We're going to let you wash and get the gasoline off you. And we're going to throw things over now to Kate. Does that matter? We're standing here once again with Nanaimo Mayor John Rattan. The great international world championship bathtub race is, a race is approaching 50 years. Yeah, amazing. Uh, 47 years, a huge event for the city of Nanaimo. It is, and you know, I think Frank Ney and, and Glenn Galloway, the two people who started the race 47 years ago, would both be amazed today to see that it's still going and still going strong. And uh, you know, it, it turned out uh, to be a, not only a successful event, but it was kind of just a zany idea from two guys in the real estate industry that um, There's came no up. zany characters in the real estate industry, now. Nah. Heaven forbid, <laughs> but you're right, of course there isn't. Anyway, it was just um, one of those things that seemed to catch on. And you know, the, the thing that's so important for us is to try to keep changing. We have to keep looking at options and, and new ideas and so on. And this year, I haven't got the hard figure, but I think it's somewhere between 14 and 17 new tubbers are, are in the race this year. And that's exciting because it means there's still interest in there from, from the younger people. 
um, and that's what we need to continue with the race. It is absolutely a tradition in Nanaimo, and it's a bit of, I don't know if double-edged sword is the right phrase, but something that's so established, that's been going on for so long, it's easy to kind of get same old, same old. Yep. I, is that a challenge? Is there is sort of a mood of that out there, do you think? Well, there is, you know, and, and of course, the, the most traumatic change we ever made was when we changed the race course from uh, going to uh, Kitslino Beach in Vancouver right. and brought it onto this side. And there was a number of reasons for that. Significantly, uh, we didn't have the resources to police them going across the street. And uh, the military really was uh, concerned about uh, equipment and manpower to do that. And so we did modify the race. And, you know, at, at the beginning, we were really frightened that this might be the death knell. But mm -hmm. in fact, it's turned out to be a very big positive because interest is as strong now as it ever has been and the other thing is of course now we are here at departure bay beach um with a crowd which wouldn't be here under the old terms and so people have at least in Nanaimo, have the opportunity to go to, to uh, mafeo sutton park and watch the start of the race and uh, casually drive down to departure bay and watch it finish so uh, we've got sponsors at both ends and um, things to do bouncy castles here at departure bay and a lot of events uh, in mafeo sutton park so we something for everyone. And it really has changed from sort of a, uh, a raw, raw party atmosphere. There still, of course, is an element of that, but it's a family feel uh, down here at Departure Bay on race day that is Sunday. I have heard talk about, you know, wouldn't it be better if the race came around and looped right back into the Nanaimo Harbor, finishing where it started? And I know that you're not a race organizer, but do you know why or what the reasoning is behind not bringing it back to Maffeo Sutton Park? Well, there are a number of reasons, and certainly the most important one, of course, is that the Port Authority closes off the harbor uh, to enable the race to start. And uh, if it went out and looped around and came back in there, we'd have to close the harbor again, uh, interrupt uh, the schedule with the ferries and certainly the float planes. And so it's a challenge. And, um, and also, um, logistically, we're finding some advantages of having a complete finish line set up here in Departure Bay and a complete start line set up in Maffeo Sutton. So, I mean, I think it's working and we're pleased with it. And uh, it's growing and the sponsors are stepping forward in greater numbers. Um, yeah, we're pretty excited, you know. Uh, but at the same time, you're absolutely right. We have to keep looking at options and ways to change it. Um, it we can't leave it the same day after day or year after year, rather, because uh, people will lose interest. And so we're trying to think of new things all the time, and uh, we'll see. How new would it be to get you in a tub, then? Actually, very new. <laughs> uh, years, years ago, um, I participated. And thank you very much, Kate. I really appreciate the question. Um, we, But I uh, actually raced a tub or, or participated in a racing in uh, uh, Bremerton, Washington and um, had a chance. There were several of us together in kind of a, a casual format, but it was a bit of a race. And uh, I was surprised um, how the water was confined. It was fairly smooth. And uh, how unstable the tubs really are, and particularly at speed, you know. Um, and uh, if you had to couple that with doing an open water race for up to two hours, uh, I mean, I had trouble walking after I got out of it after 20 minutes. Um, I just have nothing but admiration for the people that spend all that time in the tub and can get out and a lot of people say, what's wrong with them? You sit in a tub for two hours and see if you can walk normally, you know, it's tough. And they, uh, it's, they really have to be in good physical condition to do this. There's no question about it. Thanks, John. John Rattan, Mayor of Nanaimo, in the role today of Master of Ceremonies here at the finish line at Departure Bay Beach. We're throwing things down to beachfront. The place to be where all the action is, Matt Carter is right in the middle of it all. Here is the action. Yes, right down on Departure Bay Beach. Thank you so much, Kate. And uh, as we've shown in the shots over the course of the day, an amazing crowd down here at the beach taking in the festivities and the race. I'm here with uh, two folks here, Mitchell and Allie, checking on the race. How are you guys doing today? Good, how are you? Not too bad, thanks. That's good, thank you. All right, so again, before we get into your opinions of the race, uh, again, a very it's an international race, right? It's in the title. And, and we have Mitchell, originally from the Nanaimo, checking out the race here in his hometown. And Ali, where's your hometown? Um, I was actually born in Italy, uh, but I lived in Argentina and now I've been living here for seven years. So, Victoria. Mostly. Perfect. All right, so Victoria now, but all around the world. Have you ever seen any sort of event like this quite as crazy in Argentina or Italy? Nope, never seen this before. He has, and so that's the first time for me coming down here. Yeah. Awesome. All right, so again, Mitchell, you've seen the race before, um, living in Victoria now, also from the Nanaimo. And you said you have some friends that have uh, raced in this event in the past? Yeah, a few years ago, my buddy Nick Karpinski did a few races. I think he came first one year, I don't remember. It was a long time ago, I was young, but yeah, I used to watch it every year with my dad. So, so again, you come down here a lot, obviously now through different generations have checked the race out. What does it mean, do you think, for Nanaimo to have an event like this? Well, it's pretty cool. It shows off Nanaimo's heritage. It's a tradition, and everyone loves tradition, so 
that's pretty cool. Absolutely, and again, a great crowd out here today. Uh, send any message out to any folks who maybe have not checked out this race in the past. Why should they come down and uh, be a part of it? Well, it's a lot of fun. Like everyone comes out and hangs out, and I don't know. I'd say all my friends come down. It's a good thing, group thing to do. Why Absolutely. not? Absolutely. All right. Thanks so much. Now again, I can't talk anymore. They did put up this fence here because they were a bit nervous of the questions I had asked, but hopefully it wasn't too bad. So thanks so much, you guys. Enjoy the rest of the day, and thanks so much for supporting Bat Tubs. Thanks. Have thanks, a good day. You too. Have a good day. All right. Perfect. All right. So again, great crowd down here, and so we got a little bit of a low before we have the next tub come in. So I'm going to see. Do we have anyone up on the finish line? It looks like uh, Kelly is up there. I have some stuff ready to go. So Kelly Robinson, over to you. What's going on? Thanks, Matt. I'm here with Terry Fagan, who is a member of the Fagan family and long time history with the Bathtub Society. Tell me about it. Um, my dad raced in the first race in 1967 with the uh, Departure Bay Firemen. And then my brother and sister both uh, raced forever since they were allowed old enough to race. I mean, I think Stephen did his first race at 13 and that was in the 70s, 80s, you know, and they raced right until the end. Um, so we give away uh, a last place trophy, which sometimes we're refurbishing all of Tracy and Steve's trophies that they received during the years, and they received quite a few. So some of them are pretty large because they did very well. So we give a Fagan family memorial trophy every year now in honor of my mom and my sister who have passed. And so we give the trophy to the last place guy because it's a tough haul out there. It is. I know there's been so many out today and it's been a rough day, but there's been lots of finishers. So I can see why a last place trophy is important. Now, have you ever raced yourself? Um, in the regatta, when we used to go to Kelowna regatta, they used to have a ladies race and I was a token girl thrown in a tub. But in those days, uh, it was all about, they didn't weigh, right? And I was always a big girl and Tracy was tiny. And so tiny, faster, lighter, you know, flat. Kelowna. Anyhow, both my mom and I got in the tub. It's very different being on the inside than yelling from the escort boat. So yeah, it's very different. And even though you're not racing this year, huge involvement here at the finish line. Why is it important for you to volunteer for this event? Well, Margaret Johnson organizes us and writes us down to volunteer every year. She's phenomenal. And uh, so I live up in Cumberland and I come down every year just to help her out because when you've been around racing, it's like a second nature, you know what to expect and it's not surprising when they're giving you information. So we try to make sure that the information is passed from the radio bathtub headquarters to Mr. Rattan, who is the MC, so that the public knows what's going on. I think you guys are doing a great job. Thank you so much, Terry. We're going to take a break now and throw things over to Kate. Thank you, Kelly. There is a bit of a lull in the tubbers coming into Departure Bay Beach at the moment. We're trying to discern uh, how many tubs are still unaccounted for. The guess at the moment is between eight and ten bathtubs. We're approaching the three hour mark since the race started at 11 a.m. on the Sunday. Um, and and the, the longest time ever, the first tubs were just starting to cross the finish line. Now on a fast race, year everybody who was going to finish the race would be done and spending time with their family at the moment so we're just going to recap some of the uh, facts around this year's race there's potentially four female tubbers and one has crossed the finish line now um, the tubber Angie Gagnac finished uh, first in stock in 2007 2009 so there is certainly a strong female representation in bathtubbing but we need more ladies out there to give the men a run for their money and again I keep thinking that one of these years I'm gonna end up in a bathtub um, of the seven super modified racers three this year were going for their third win none of them got it so the competition for that spot will continue next year Shaw TV has been involved with bathtub coverage for many many years now and it takes a huge crew of staff and volunteers although it feels a bit light because we got a lot of people on holidays this year we have I would guess about six to eight volunteers uh, here today working cameras and doing some audio in our major mobile truck we've got about five to six staff people on site here today we have five or six cameras all wired to a truck that is parked right on the beach planning for this uh, from our end began I'd say about three or four months ago but every year we always look forward to what we can do what we can improve next year and I think we got the major issue from last year already resolved 
involved. It didn't rain this year, thankfully for that. We are going to throw things over to Kelly Robinson. She's in conversation with the man who knows all there is to know about bathtubbing, Commodore Bill McGuire. You got it, Kate. We are here with Commodore Bill McGuire, and we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, this is the big race, the World Championship bathtub race, but this is part of a circuit. That's correct, yes. Uh, the Daily Free Press sponsors a World Cup program, and what we're trying to do is encourage other areas to get tubbers involved. So uh, we have races in Oak Bay, which has had one for, I guess, going on 44 or 45 years. Um, we also have another race in Nanaimo in Departure Bay, um, again, a warm-up race prior to this one. Uh, we have a race in uh, Campbell River, and Schooner Cove is going to host a race again. They did before, but they're going through some renovations in condos, so that's going to happen again. And we have two uh, races down in Bremerton, Washington, and Silverdale, Washington. And those points all accumulate through the year, and then they're awarded the Daily News Free, uh, free Press uh, World Cup. So it's a different one, but this is the granddaddy. Uh, there's races held actually all over the world that are looking at sending the, uh, their, uh, uh, their winner to the big race, which is, which is our race. And it's where uh, Bath Up Racing started. Yes, and so their points here today, they matter. Yes, by all means for the World Cup. And uh, I think the glory of winning this race is very similar to NASCAR. And uh, they have the Daytona 500, which is their big race. It's actually the first race of the circuit. And then they have their uh, different awards during the year, or different races during the year. And they all accumulate points to uh, a very similar program to ours. In fact, I guess if it, the truth known, we more likely copied them. And there's some pretty big trophies behind us. I know you can't see them very well behind, but there's some big hardware people are going after. Um, tell us about kind of some of the trophies people can win. Well, basically, there's one uh, that I always like to talk about, and it's the Tim Hortzman Sportsmanship Award. And that's awarded to a tubber uh, and or crew member and or somebody that's been involved in bathtub racing. And uh, it's the most sportsmanlike. And it's always the last one we present. And uh, um, it's just uh, a thank you for somebody that's contributed to bathtub racing, whether they be a pilot, uh, a, a crew member. Um, again, and it's, it's a real honor to win that one. It's put up by Tim Hortons. And uh, we'll have one of the managers of their many stores in Nanaimo coming down to present it. Um, the rest of the trophies, you're right. They, they go back now. This will be the 47th time they've been presented so uh, the Frank Ney Memorial the Glenn Galloway Memorial so yes there's a lot of history in the uh, um, in the trophies and we put them out so people can see all the different names over the years now you've witnessed this you've been involved for many years and watched the reaction of people what is it the trophy or is it the bragging rights uh, I think the bragging rights on this particular race are more than likely what the tubbers are after uh, a lot of people don't realize they say well how much do you win and uh, and as you know uh, you win a golden plug and a keeper trophy and a very nice uh, perpetual trophy, which we grab back as quickly as we can. So, um, but I think it's the bragging rights. It's a good way of putting it, Kelly. Thank you so much, Bill. We're going to check in with the beach now with Matt Carter. Thank you so much, good. Kelly. Thank much so appreciated. Much, yeah, we're down here at the beach, and it's time for a little bit of a look, uh, an interesting look at the history of uh, the bathtub races here, and I've got a gentleman in particularly well-versed in that. We're here with Brian Ranger. Brian, how are you doing today? Great, great. Love to be down here. It's so exciting. Absolutely, and it's also exciting for a reason. Now, you are, if I got this correct, one of the past champions. Yeah, I won in 1982. It was my first um, totally different race. We went to uh, Kitts Beach back then, and eight-foot swells. I lost my escort boat three times. <laughs> I actually ended up finishing the race with the our opposition. I raced for Chubb Radio, and the opposition radio sea keg actually took me into the finish line. So it was a bit of a you know, what do you do, right? <laughs> Anything to finish the race, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And it was uh, it was seven years you raced in the event. Yeah, we raced for seven years. Uh, came twelfth one year. Ended up in Bowen Island one year. <laughs> uh, never flipped though. So. <laughs> Now we were talking beforehand, and you were actually here to uh, see the very first 
race back in 1967. And uh, tell us a bit about the race and also about a family member that also participated in it. Yeah, um, I'm not sure how old I was, but uh, my cousin, Terry Bracewell, um, was going to set off from Swailana Lagoon. And so we went down as a family to watch him. And he, uh, just as it started the race, they pushed the tub out. It lasted about 10 seconds, <laughs> and down it went, and that was the end of him. Right. And from that day forward, I always said, you know what, I'm going to do that one day. Excellent, and you did, and again, became yep. a champion. Yep. And if we can tastefully say this, how, how were the boats decorated back then? Um, well, back in 1967, <laughs> it was pretty interesting. A piece of plywood with this kind of the fiberglass mold stuck to it, and um, usually like a long, tall pole with some paraphernalia to identify them. <laughs> <laughs> well, go any further. It's almost sort of like the spirit of the silly boat races now. Oh, yeah. It was yeah. exactly what the Bata races yeah. were back yeah. in yeah. the it 60s. Was, it was back then. It was anything you could get to float for <laughs> a few minutes or maybe, I mean, there was one guy, Stan Vollmers, actually stood up the whole way to win. <laughs> so, you know, and he's since passed on, but, you know, his, his history uh, will live on forever. Perfect. And also, um, apart from the race itself, as you mentioned back then, it went from, from the Nanaimo to Vancouver. But what about sort of what was happening on the shore? What were the crowds like? Was oh. it really well supported in the very first few years? Yeah, the crowds were just phenomenal. We had all the major uh, TV stations. Um, the run up to the beach was about 100 meters long, and <laughs> it was just a wall of people on both sides. So you'd land your boat and have to pull out of the tub, which they do now and run that long distance and it was quite a sight. Quite a sight exactly. Yeah, quite a sight. Exactly. Especially if you had any, uh, I would imagine you saw some races where it was neck and neck and yeah, oh you ever yeah. people try to rustle each other down to get to the bell? Or? Uh, not that I remember, but uh, <laughs> I mean, I was in there first, so it didn't really matter, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So for, any, for anyone who hasn't uh, ever raced in a tub, what would you explain to them? Like, what, what are the conditions like out there racing across the ocean? Oh, it's just a crazy out there today. It's 17 to 20 knot winds. Um, I fish out there all the time and that is very rough. These are only eight foot boats. So, you know, the high performance guys, they will hopefully try to skip from wave to wave. Uh, some make it, some don't. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so I guess the uh, final question to you, again, a great showing here from people. What does the bats of races, what do they mean to the city of Nanaimo? Well, this is really their premier event. This brings people from everywhere and it's, it's exciting to watch the finish. We were, and the start we were down last night, seeing all the people for the fireworks. It's, it's just a great uh, economic boost for the Hub City. Absolutely. Yeah. And a final question for you actually, if you have any tips for anyone who might want to get into racing, what's the most important thing you could uh, give to them? Just um, crank that throttle to the max and hang on, because it'll be a ride. Perfect, all right, thank you so much. Brian Ranger, champion in 1982. Thank you so much for taking yeah. the time to speak to us. Great. Have a great day. Thanks very much. All right, yeah. shake your hand. We put the old clipboard down. There we go. Now we can do the handshake. All right, reverse left. All right, so we're going to see. Do we have someone waiting for us up by the finish line right about now? Cater Kelly, you guys ready to go up there? Okay, and this is a giant, fantastic piece of history when it comes to bathtubbing. Paul Johnson's name is on the back of this trophy here. What year have you got? I think I've got 93 here was uh, my claim to fame. And this is first place modified great international world championship at to brace Frank Nay Memorial Trophy. Take us for a little walk down memory lane here. Okay, well I think this has got to be the epitome of the tubbing trophies. The modified um, became the norm in the 80s for racing. Um, There's still the stock tubbers, which were backyard tubbers, but this is what all the competition was about. Um, and this trophy here, I love it so much because it was the original first place trophy and it morphed into the first place modified in 1993 when they made it the Frank Ney Memorial Trophy. And as we just mentioned, 93 was the year I have the claim to fame of winning this trophy. Always special for me because it was the first year of it being the Frank Ney Memorial. And this is something that the uh, first place modified tubber gets to take home and actually live with for a year in their own environment. How, how, how proud they must feel in that time. I think so. It was for me. I mean, this is a claim to fame. You have this in your mantle and people come over and you say, I won that. I was there and I done it. <laughs> is there a tradition of uh, drinking out of the cup? 
That's a little tougher secret. I think we'll have to leave that. <laughs> that. And you have a huge showing in your family. Tell me about your family members that are involved in bathtubbing and what they're doing here today. Uh, we sure do. Well, I mean, as been mentioned, Dad started the first race. Uh, him and I were involved in the tub or, tubbing as racers for the first 40 years. We can claim that. Since then, my mom has also become heavily involved. She's Vice Commodore. Um, she's the lady behind tubbing right now. Her and a very select group. Yeah, that is uh, very, very true. We were at the um, safety meeting this morning and they acknowledged Margaret and a huge cheer from the crowd came out and she just kind of blushed a little bit and she loves it. She does, but she is quite shy. She likes to be the lady behind the scenes. Um, we also have my wife helping with weigh-ins and my daughter is assisting with um, John Rattan on the stage Excellent. with my sister. We do have one more tub coming in now. I've got no information on who that tub is or what number it is. Uh, 830 is something that I'm hearing. Terry is a first name and I don't know if I should actually be throwing it down to Matt uh, on the beach. We'll have more information on that. Matt Carter. Absolutely. Thanks, Kate. Yes, as you mentioned, 8.30 in the stock trash. Terry at Learmonth coming in, sponsored by Cornerstone Tile. And a nice, a nice other backflip out of the boat. Heading up now, here in the crowds of the chairs. And yes, ringing the bell to signify the end. Oh, nice big embrace there with the mayor. <laughs> you know where the boat's going next time, that's for sure. So again, Terry, Learmonth there, number 8.30, finishing the race there. All right, so I think we're going to throw it back up to the finish line to see what's happening there. Am I going to throw it to you? Is Kate ready to go? Yeah. Keddy. Who, me? I Ah, sure, Kate's ready to go. Kate, let's throw it back over to you and see what's happening up at the finish line. <laughs> okay, we are waiting for a final tub to cross the finish line. There's about seven tubs that are unaccounted for at this moment. The last update was that we were still waiting for some of the tubs to pass checkpoint four. They could be out on the water for another 45 minutes still. Tub number 010, unaccounted for Darren Logan, 037, Mark Grant, 04. Five, five, Jenna Mitchell, 130, Max Milkey, 157, Matthew Collins, 830 is Terry Learmont, uh, 282, and I am obviously literally reading from a list here. Terry just came in. He's going to cross behind me at the moment. Kelly Robinson will let him catch his breath, and then we'll get a short interview with Terry. Uh, still out there on the water, 486, Trenton. Anderson. Uh, hopefully we'll see some of these tubs cross the finish line. All we can really um, be sure of is that they are going to be safe and that this uh, race is not over until they are all accounted for. And if they've dropped out for whatever reason and have not contacted bathtub control but are instead in the pub drinking, they're in trouble and they will hear about it when the Commodore gets a hold of them later on. Let's check in with uh, Kelly Robinson and Terry who just rang the bell. Thanks, Kate. I'm here with Terry Learmoth, who just rang the bell, as you said. I can see your knees look so raw. This is, how many hours were you out there? It I have must no idea, I have no idea. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling good. Well, I'm, the, I'm feeling good. I feel a little sad that we didn't do a bit better than we uh, anticipated, but we finished. So, one, one I was uh, ejected from the boat early on in the race and uh, the motor flooded and so on and so forth. So the plan quickly changed from a win to uh, just finish the race. So Can I get you to elaborate on that? You were ejected from the boat? <laughs> well, yeah, no, I, was, I was thrown from the boat. So it was, it was pretty rough out there. There's a few rough spots and uh, yeah, I was, I was, I was uh, taken advantage of by the ocean. I don't know what to say about it. <laughs> how many before. years have you raced? This is my fourth year. And how does this year compare to past? Uh, this year wasn't too bad, actually, but I was just taken from surprise by surprise. I think this year was probably the uh, lightest it's ever been for my, for my racing. But uh, yeah, so I, I'm pretty disappointed in the way I was uh, ejected from the boat, but this is what it is. You know what, you can't be too disappointed. There was a lot of people out before, I mean, a few minutes into the race and there was probably over a quarter of people out. So the fact that you finished, I think is great. Um, tell me a little bit about, how are your knees feeling right now? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm still trying to catch my breath, to be honest, but uh, they're feeling good. They're feeling great. And they're feeling terrible, actually, now that I think about it. <laughs> 
if you if somebody was thinking, hey, maybe I want to give this a try, what do would you do it? Definitely do it. We need more people competing, and we need we definitely need more boats competing. It's uh, so much fun. It really is. It's it's the best uh, weekend of the year for sure. It is so much fun. So we need more people out. Do it. Compete. Come on. Do it. Awesome. That, and that says a lot coming from somebody that's knees are pretty red and beat up and even bleeding. Thank you so much and good luck next year. And we're going to throw things over now to Kate and Matt. Hi, Kelly, and I hope you're going to come join us. What are, you, are you hitting it out of the park? I'm hitting it out of the park, yes. <laughs> <laughs> How was it for you down on the beach there? It was pretty awesome. Uh, Derek and I had a whole um, seafood buffet that we were partaking when not on camera. Beautiful, I knew beautiful you stuff. had the best gig Garlic down there. Garlic prawns, not too bad. And the crab's legs, uh, Dungeness King, a big option there. So it was really nice. How are I, things I, up here? I think he was on a different production than we were. What do you think? I'm thinking he was. <laughs> <laughs> that does wrap it up for another year, the 47th annual Great International World Championship Bathtub Race. We were very sorry to not see Tyler Kyle I know. cross. And you, you did the story with I him on did, Go Island. I did, and you know what? I'm, I'm really curious as to what happened because they had their boat running great and he's a good operator and his friends had faith in him. And now I'm worried because, you know, like... The, his co-worker there said that if he didn't finish properly, he'd be they'd well, be maybe accepting resumes. Oh, I actually, I actually no. know what happened, actually. He you sort, know what happened? He actually misread the title and built a shower. It wasn't a bathtub, it was a shower. And so basically it was a stand-up <laughs> thing, wasn't very seaworthy. So if, the, if you do the shower races next year, it'll be great. That'll but become the next go. big event in the meantime, in the it's just back to the fishing yeah. rod, I guess. So. It takes a whole lot of effort behind the scenes to make this coverage possible. We'd like to extend our gratitude to all of the volunteers in the truck and out in the hot sun making this coverage possible for you. You are watching it on Shaw TV Channel 4. Our viewership area runs from Salt Air up to Qualicum Bay, but we do a lot of other great stuff on the channel. You're a part of all that great stuff that Absolutely. we do on the channel. <laughs> Absolutely. Whether it's the segments, of course, that have back to you, you do on Go <laughs> Island. Uh, the segments, of course, Kelly Robinson does. All the many hosts, whether it's the show, um, of course, our boy Dan Marshall, some great sports program on there. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. So it's yeah. so great that uh, we're allowed to come down here and, uh, again, be a part of the bathtub festivities and bring it to you on your television and on the internet. And it does have reaches that go far beyond Nanaimo. We have some of our Victoria colleagues in the truck and we're very thrilled to be working as one team with the folks from Victoria today. Matt's given a shout out to Christina and Justin and I'm probably forgetting someone so we will apologize in <laughs> advance for that. A lot of questions today. Where can you watch it online? Uh, yes, well, we have a YouTube channel that I guess we're going to be uploading to. Jocelyn's uh, behind the camera nodding her head. Yeah, She's our social, yeah, we're social media appearance YouTube person. YouTube and our to say. Facebook page. <laughs> uh, but this production will air, depending on when you're catching it, it's going to be airing, today is the 28th on uh, 6 and 9 p.m., and then as well on the 29th at 1 and 7 p.m., and on the 30th. The Tuesday. Tuesday at 2 p.m. So. And then if you've missed all of those air dates, you can uh, move to online. our social media sites. Absolutely, yeah. Just That's search it. for us. Uh, Shock TV Central Vancouver Islands on uh, YouTube. And again, not only this production be there, we actually have last year's production there where you can watch us pretty much get yeah. rained out. And your your <laughs> mascara looks fabulous dripping down your yes, face. And, yes, yeah. along with the sunscreen. My, you ma know? my, my, my mascara looks horrible. <laughs> Are you going to go in a tub? Can we get you in a tub, Matt? I actually, you know what? It just seems like such an essential part of the community that I would go in a tub if, Ooh, if, there, if, there, if there's first. a category for three people in a tub. Three people in a tub. We're going to host the show from a tub next year? One, two, Three. I wow. sense a challenge. <laughs> and I think we'll win. We'll leave it on that note. We'll see you next year. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. Really.